from here, sir. Please read this particular ayah for me, sir. Surah Al Furqan, ayah 44. Please read that for us, sir. Well, read this, sir. Or do you think that most of them hear or understand? Talking about those people who did not hear or understand Islam, what is it saying? Exactly. Who is it talking about? About me, because I have rejected Islam. So about me, what is it saying? They are us, the cattle. Cattle. No, they are farther astray. So how does Islam see Non-Muslims, please come and read this, sir. Islam sees non-Muslims as cattle, as pigs, as cows, as sheep, camels. Islam tells you there is none. Mohammed Hijab, we have a we have a problem here. We have a problem here, Mohammed Hijab. Islamic slavery is a serious problem. Please come over here and defend your Islam. Mohammed Hijab, please come over here and defend Islam. Islam calls. Islam Hijab We have a problem here please And the problem is Slavery I'm doing well How are you doing? Good to see you What is your name? My name is Arul What's your name? Mohammed Mohammed That's fine Don't worry Well if you can ask what you ask I can ask what I ask Now this is the problem. Islam is on the line. No, 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 no. Islam is on the line. The problem is Islamic slavery did not have a theological basis to be abolished. This is the problem we have. Whereas slavery in which Europeans were involved in were abolished through scriptures, the Bible, Islamic slavery was never abolished by this. And that's where I'd like to I'd like to have a conversation here, please. I'm very happy to have that conversation. The pro, no, the, the, do you would you like to debate now? Excuse me, sir, please stay away. Would you like to debate now? Would you like to debate now? I don't mind having a conversation with you, my friend. Okay. So let's do this. Four minutes each. You wanna have four minutes each? Four minutes each. Let's try and examine what the basis of basics of how Islamic slavery differs from things which are recorded as slavery in the Bible and on what basis slavery was abolished by Bible readers please bring all the Dawah channels we need more please bring them here no, that, 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 that thing there is not going to be a great timer, is it? Give me a better one, man. Give me another one. Yeah. Ah, nice. Well done. Good, thank you. Tell me more about yourself. What's well, your name again? I am a Christian. No, what's your name? Well, do you have a memory issue, Mohammed? What's, what's wrong with you? Oh, that's fine. You don't have to, because if I, even if I tell you again, you're going to forget. No problem. So, my name is Arul. Harul. Arul. Arul. A R U L. Arul. Yes. Are you from India or English? Though? I am from India. What part of India are you from? South India. Which part? Tamil Nadu. Tamil? Yeah. Oh, very nice. Are you Tamil Tiger? Well, are all Tamils Tamil Tigers? No, no, no. Okay. Now. Now, but you're Tamil Tiger in a different way. Okay. Let's. let's. Are you signed, yeah? Mohammed. You want to sign? Yeah, yeah, four minutes. Right? One second. Four so minutes. Who's that? What? 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 We at? One second. No, where's, no, no. The, where's the Dawa channels gone? Ah, the topic. You got two, you got two. But let's get one of them before you start. Huh? We'll give him, we'll give him eight minutes. Give him ten minutes. Say again? I can't hear you, bro. Back up, back up, back up. Hey, Mohammed Hijab. What's his name? Ali. 
Ali, Ali, please come and join. He would need help pretty soon. Please come. Please come here. He will do you with his toe. Extra two minutes. But Only his toe. He will need his toe to review you. Oh, nice. Yes, are you the one who spat, spat on TV? Which one are you? No, no, no. no. Are, you, are you the one who, was, who thinks argument, good argument is spitting on people? Was it you? Or was it him? I've never said that a good argument is spitting on people. Well, you seem to have repeated that. Yes. Come on. We'll give you extra three minutes. The uncle is coming to you. The only thing we spit is up. <laughs> yes. Hey, 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 social media star. Do you, do you know this guy? <laughs> he's a nice bloke. Yeah. Sensible one. Yeah, you know very good. Unlike many of you, he's a very sensible one. What's that? I know, I know. The Bible isn't perfect. The Bible isn't perfect. All right. Are your Dawah channels here? Do you want to put your... Hey, what's going on, bro? Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Hey, hey, excuse me. It's fine. The old man is being rude. Excuse me, please don't be rude to him. I'm not being rude to him. He's pushing What's everyone. No? He's pushing. All right, do you have a problem with him coming here? I have a problem with pushing me. Okay. James, brother James, come this way. Don't. Don't that line. Don't that line. Don't that line. I'm James. Brother James, that's fine. Okay, you understand Brother James, we need him. So. How many minutes? The topic that we're going to talk about is the factors? Have you started the time, yeah? No, 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 no. Before starting, before why, why starting, we before starting, it's your time. Bef before starting, okay, go on. Discuss the topic. Discuss the topic. What, what do you want to talk about? So I am here to talk about the differences between Islamic slavery and slavery as recorded in scriptures. And theologically, the Bible rejects slavery, okay. and therefore those who read the Bible the could. Old, the Old Testament and New Testament. Both okay. reject slavery, okay, and therefore those, easy, those, oh. those, those, those who read the Bible okay. could no, very I strongly I understand, I understand the reject I the Bible, I uh, reject, the reject is, uh, slavery. I but in contrast, in regards to Islam, right, can we get your time started then? Because we understand the topic. What's the topic? The topic is slavery, right? And the biblical slash Quranic view of it, right? Yeah. Right, Quranic view. Few four minutes. Guess Do five. you agree with Islamic slavery? No, I'm happy with the topic. Yes. But do you agree? No, no one's four one minutes. Answer. No, no, don't ask me questions. No, no. You want to start? You got your four do you, minutes. Do you, no, 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 do no, 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 don't ask me questions. No, no. no the topic. No, 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 no. no. That the, topic. The topic is fine. What is the topic? The topic is slavery in the Bib in the Bible and the Quran. Do that's not a topic. I'm proposition. Yes, is what is the proposition? That is, that's what you said. I'm happy with it. The proposition. Are you happy with that? The proposition. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Islam. Yeah. Continues to have slavery okay, no problem. underpinning its fine. theology. Okay, I disagree with it. If you're talking about good human to human slavery, not God to human, right? Is that what you mean? Human to human slavery. Fine, yeah. no problem. I'm against that proposition. Okay, good. So right, that's so, what we're talking about. And also, we're talking about the Bible, right? Yeah, yeah. So no Four minutes. Go ahead, please. Do you want to go first? No, you go. First. Okay. You want to No, no, one second. No, 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 wait. Brother, you oh, all right. I'm look away. Look away. Okay, let's. Right, what's your one now, yeah? Brother, one let's, let's focus on the big topics and then we'll talk about these things okay. later. Okay. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. Four minutes now. Go ahead. Okay. Islam approves of Islamic slavery. And therefore, to, even until today, even until today, there is no theological basis to reject slavery according to Islam. Why does Islam propagate slavery? Point number one, Muhammad himself and the wider religion has a derogatory view on a few different people groups. Number one, black people. Number two, unbelievers. And uh, especially women. A very derogatory view. And this resulted in harsh dealing by people including Muhammad himself of slaves. Harsh punishments, harsh dealing with slaves. Slaves had, were tortured, sex torture for female slaves. Slaves had no rights and um, slaves had perpetual slavery, no legal rights, no civil rights. They were treated as merchandise and so on. According to Islam, there was no intention to manumit, i.e. to abolish slavery. Muhammad himself allowed Islamic slavery to be propagated until perpetuity. So Islam is a very bad model for today. Because according to Islam, 
Islamic slavery is still a valid model to be practiced and will be practiced even till the end of times. In contrast, when we come to the Bible, the Bible considers every human being to be similar. When we compare the Bible, Jesus Christ with Muhammad, we see someone who is well fitting into the 21st century model where we hate racism, where we hate slavery. So Jesus Christ is the only person that needs to be followed in terms of um, our modern views of slavery, abolishing of slavery, and therefore Muhammad ought to be rejected. So in particular, I'd like to ask the question to Muhammad, who is here. Muhammad, the so-called Islamic prophet, approves of having sex with captives, captive women at will by Muslims. Do you think that's a very good model for today to practice? When Muslims go to capture non-Muslims, do you think Muslims should have the ability and the permission from Muhammad and the Islamic Allah to have sex with captive women at all times, anytime they want to, and do you agree with that principle? Do you think that upholds human values properly? Okay, go on. No, that's fine, go on. Thank you for joining the Sunday sparring sessions with subpar opponents like this man here, who clearly is not um, articulate enough and hasn't used enough evidences from the Quran or something. In fact, if I recall, he hasn't used any evidence at all. He, did, he had papers in his hand, but he didn't even quote a single verse from the Quran or a single hadith. Unfortunately, today, what I will be doing is the opposite of that without the papers in my hand. So the Quran states something which refutes almost everything he states, which is in chapter 90 of the Quran, where it says, What would make you know what the good way is? Freeing slaves is the good way. So the idea that the manumission of slaves or the emancipatory discourse was that which is not mentioned in the Quran, but in fact the opposite of is mentioned, is something directly refuted in the Quranic discourse. Now this verse, is not an abrogated verse. Now I would like to know how my friend here has an answer for this verse. But not only this, we find in the Quran, in chapter 9, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions the categories of zakat, which is, as you know, one of the five pillars of Islam. There are five pillars of Islam. I can teach you the basics in, uh, some other time. One of them is zakat, <laughs> the charity. And so one of the, one of the categories of charity is wafir riqab, and freeing slaves. So here you have two things. You have an emancipatory discourse in chapter 90, Surah Al-Balad. And then you have the Quran saying, one of the obligations, which is zakat, you have to spend the money to emancipate slaves. And then we have all of these ahadith of the Prophet Muhammad telling us of the virtue of freeing slaves. Now, this already has refuted almost everything that he has said. Let's move to the Bible now for a nice discussion about Numbers chapter number 31, verse number 18, which of course is going to be a difficult verse for my honorable friend. And of course, I use the term loosely here to explain where Moses is told to go into go into the uh, to the town, and he is take the young girls for yourself. Now, what young girls is he talking about here? When you look at the Babylonian Talmud, which is actually exegetes this particular verse, it's talking about prepubescent girls. So Moses is being instructed yeah, yeah. to take prepubescent girls for yourself for as captives. Now the idea is this, I want to know of a single verse of the Quran or a single hadith where prepubescent girls are told to be taken as captives in this manner. In fact, not only this, 
But if they believe that uh, they believe that Jesus is God, because he is part of the Trinity, and therefore he's actually the author of the Old Testament as well, isn't he? Because he's God, and he's inseparable from the rest of the Trinity, right? So of course, you have a double problem here. Jesus Christ, therefore, is the one that is commanding Moses to go and take captives, which are girls, for himself in chapter 31, verse 18 of Numbers. So this refutes the secondary claim that he had, that Jesus was completely disassociated from these slaves. So you have two things here. You have a complete refutation of the fact that there's not an emancipatory discourse in the Quran, which there is. And then you have a charge which I'm putting forward to the subpar opponent who will have no tools of being able to answer this question. That number one was Moses being commanded to take uh, slaves, but also that Jesus commanded this as well. All right. So Mohammed here calls me subpar, but, the bo but both the points he raised are really subpar. Let's look at both of them carefully. What happened in the book of Numbers? Read the verse carefully. The context corresponds to Moabites. You might have heard about a person called Balaam acting on behalf of the Moabites, leading the nation of Israel to sexual immorality and thereby allowing Balaam to be able to curse the nation of Israel. That's the historical context. People who were involved in sexual immorality. In that, with that as the backdrop, what Moses said, Muhammad, is that you need to read the verse carefully. It wasn't talking about pre-puberty, -pre -puber nothing about adolescence or puberty is discussed. If you read the verse carefully, all that it would no talk about is girls or ladies who did not have intimacy with men. What was he talking about? What he was talking about was those who did not lead you to sexual immorality. Those kinds of girls, I challenge Muhammad, why did you mention puberty? You need to show me that from the Bible, while the Bible talks about intimacy, number one. Number two, the Bible went, showed to me where these ladies were taken as captives. Read the Bible carefully. What you would find is that everyone else were wiped out, whereas these were allowed to live along with the nation of Israel. That is what you would find. So find one example from the Bible, from the Bible, anywhere, old, new, anywhere you want to go to, Muhammad, and find at the end of the war where women are taken as captive to be held as slaves. Find one example and then let's talk about facts. The problem is this, Muhammad is a Muslim. And therefore, clearly, he is going to have his issues with his eyes. The problem anywhere, everywhere, whatever he reads, he is going to read Islam into it. Why do I say he is reading Islam into biblical <laughs> verses? Nowhere in the Bible you would see these women being taken as captives and made, made slaves to the people. You don't find that in the Bible, yet he reads that. And the reason for that is Muhammad allowed slavery to be to continue until the end of his life. Sahih al-Bukhari, you say slavery, uh, slaves were manumitted and that's one of the five pillars. Sahih al-Bukhari disagrees with you. Chapter 3, uh, uh, verse uh, 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 saying 765. 765, Sahih al-Bukhari 3, 765. Narrated Qurib. The free slave, the free slave of Ibn Abbas, that Maimuna bin al Harith told him that she manumitted a slave, slave girl without taking the permission of the Prophet. A person comes to Muhammad and she says, I have manumitted a slave. The great Islamic Allah who he thinks um, uh, allowed Islamic Prophet to manumit slaves. Do you know what he says? He says, why did you do it? Why did you let her go? Whereas the Bible dislikes the idea of people being taken as captive slaves, women especially, Muhammad here goes on to say, you would have got more reward if you had given her to one of your maternal uncles. So the idea that Islamic, the so-called prophet called Muhammad, implemented manumission of slaves is a fantasy idea. 
doesn't correspond to reality. Let me ask you this, Mohammed. All right. Well, thank you for uh, for that. Unfortunately, you haven't done a good job in answering my interrogation. Actually, the verse says, "Take the little ones for yourself." This is chapter 31, verse 18 of Numbers. Take them for yourself. And if you're saying this doesn't imply captivity, if you're saying this does not imply captivity, then you will be going against all halakhic understandings by the Jewish people who have been interpreting this for, for decades, in fact, actually millennia. And I will say to you once again, go back to the Je Jerusalem Talmud. There's two Talmuds, the Babylonian one and the Jerusalem one. Go and see what the rabbis have said in, re in relation to this verse. They clearly understood it to mean captivity. Okay, you don't like this verse. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter, five, uh, chapter 15, verse 2, where it talks about going the way of the Amalekites and don't leave, don't leave anything alive, uh, and uh, even the donkey. Uh, women, children, and even the donkey. And, and other places it says, leave, kill everything. So actually, the injunctions in, 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 in Numbers chapter 31, verse 18, are a step down, even though they mean captivity, <coughs> they're a step down from what we find in 1 Samuel 15. Because in 1 Samuel 15, we see everybody's genocided and everybody's killed. And once again, we have to bring to the intention of the Christian community that you may say this is the Old Testament and there's something we don't want to associate with, but if you believe that Jesus is inseparable from the Trinity, then you believe that he was the author of the Old Testament, which means that at least at one point in time, he must have ordered Moses to do those genocides and kill those children and kill those animals. This is clear and this is the understanding of the rabbis and this is the understanding quite frankly of even uh, reformers, theologians like John Calvin who exegeted the Bible. Look at how people exegeted the Bible away from this pathetic apologism that you're finding here from these people. Consistent theme that they understood it in the way of genocide and captivity and slavery. In fact, racial slavery, which he had the audacity to accuse that <coughs> prophet of, despite the fact that he's the only man, and Islam is the only religion which categorically forbids racism. And I say that to you, get me one verse of the Bible, which has the equivalent of saying racism is wrong. I can get you a hadith straight away. That there's no virtue over an Arab over a non-Arab or a black man over a white man and that the best of you are those most in virtue. Get me the equivalent of that in the Bible. We find the opposite in the Bible. Genesis chapter 9 verse number 22, we find the curse of Ham. Noah has three sons and the biblical exegete said the curse of Ham was that he was cursed with black skin, curly hair and What's slavery. The time and you see now that the, the, those who, who justify slavery in the transatlantic slave trade, obviously some use the Bible to, to I will be honest, to attack uh, slavery as well. But for the majority of those who propagated slavery, use this curse of Ham as a uh, justification. You can't come to me and talk about slavery. You can't come to me and talk about racism. Because the Bible, there is nothing in the Bible that forbids racism. We have Jesus Christ. Is it time? 20, 20 seconds. 20 seconds. We have Jesus Christ. Hey, hey, so in hey. The, in the New Testament, What's happening? we have Jesus Christ I'm, I'm, I'm shunning, shunning the Gentile woman and calling her of the dogs. This is racism with all due respect. She's, she's a dog because she's not a Jew. So here we find my challenge is very clear. One verse of the Bible which categorically <coughs> rejects slavery. And how do you deal with those verses that I told you in chapter 90 and chapter 9? Mohammed Ijab should get to know the topic first clearly. If you're going to talk about genocide as a Bible advocate, we can get to that later. The point is pretty simple, Mohammed. If you want to listen here, the point is pretty simple. The entire narration of the nation of Israel was about God redeeming a people group who were slaves, oppressed slaves. Redeeming them and giving them liberty is the entire Old Testament, the beginning of the Old Testament. And Exodus chapter 22, verse 21, soon after God brings them out, this is what he says, not to mistreat a stranger or oppress him because you were strangers in Egypt. The challenge that I had for you is very simple, Muhammad. 
find one evidence read to me one evidence where you find people who are brought under captivity and made slaves to live with Israel to be slaves with Israel you won't be able to find in contrast what you will find is that in the Bible you find God advocate similar law for foreigners and for the nation of Israel God forbidding God forbidding kidnapping ie taking a person against his will whether it against his will and bringing in bringing him under captivity you find people given rights legal rights given to those who are working in Egypt Exodus 21 21 22 21 not to mistreat a stranger or oppress him no unfair treatment no forced marriage Jesus says there is neither New Testament says Galatians 3 28 there is neither a Jew nor a Greek there is neither slave nor free excuse me one sec there is neither male nor female so if you go through the Bible the entire story about the Bible is redemption of slaves and people being me uh, made to live as free human beings only with obligation under God in contrast what do you find in contrast you find Muhammad excuse me in contrast you find Muhammad having deep racism Muhammad thinking two black people are equal to one Arab slave Sahih Muslim 10 3901 Sahih al Bukhari 9 89 256 that black people were raising heads Muhammad himself owned black slaves Sahih Muslim 10 3901 5 2 3 3 4 Al Tabari talking about black slavery explaining it as uh, as the Africans having come from Ham and therefore ought to be enslaved Tirmidhi Hadith 38 Muhammad says when Allah created Adam he stroked his right shoulder and took out a black race as if they were coals then he said to those who are on this right side toward paradise and I don't care he said to those who were on his left shoulder towards hell and I don't care what you find here is Muhammad saying all black people are destined to go to hell and he doesn't even care about this not just this Muhammad also considered anyone who is not a Muslim to be like cattle like pigs like sheep cows camels and therefore no wonder you find in Islam very evil treatment of unbelievers non-muslims when they are caught during a war what happens to them they are taken females are taken as sex slaves Quran Surah 4 Ayah 3 Surah 4 Ayah 24 we'll get to 4 3 in the next would you could is he is he with you? Could you please ask him not to disturb in the middle of in the middle of no one's with me here today. Everyone's coming from their own homes. Ready? All right. So he wanted something on the Bible. I gave him uh I gave him Deuteronomy. Uh, sorry, I gave them you can go to Deuteronomy as well, chapter twenty one. That's something that but you can also go to Numbers thirty one uh, eighteen and you can go to first Samuels. And the reason why I was mentioning genocide was because if the Bible, the biblical commandment was to kill the people, enslaving them is one notch below that. So it doesn't make sense to talk about morality when you're talking about going into an entire village of Amalekites and destroying and killing the entire population, not leaving even the animals to be alive. There is no such injunction that you will find anywhere in the Quran. And I once again challenge you to find me a single verse or a single hadith to that effect. Now. You want it to, you want it, pardon? 21. Yeah, no, it's not 21. Get it. Yeah, so now, the, 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 let's quickly talk about what he talked about. The hadiths that he mentioned were false. That the black people on the right and the left. This is not, the word used in that hadith was not black. The word was dark. And this is in the Quran, that they will have darkened faces. And in fact, ironically, this kind of language is used when men use when men practice something called infanticides, when they kill daughters that are, are girls, that, that their faces will be darkened and so on. And there's a reprimand in the Quran for that. It doesn't mean that it's talking about the race. And he talks about two black people, 
be, uh, being the thing for one. How is that the case when Bilal ibn Rabah was bought by Abu Bakr al-Siddiq for a high price, very, very high price, and then when he was told afterwards, he said, I would have paid even more for him. So this is nonsense what you're talking about. Bilal ibn Rabah, which everyone knows who he is, married Hala bin Ta'awf, who was an Arab, and he became the Mu'addin of the higher echelons of, of that particular Islamic society. There was no mention of his race in the derogatory whatsoever. In fact, we have a narration where Bilal was actually abused by Abu Zar al-Ghifari because he said to him that you're the son of a black woman. The Prophet got angry and he responded by saying, what have you said? And, and reprimanded him and told him not to say such a thing. So all of what you're, what you're doing is distorting and completely decontextualizing that which is correct. You haven't actually had any response for that which I've mentioned, which is that Jesus Christ, who is meant to be inseparable from the body of the Trinity, he is inseparable from the Trinity. He is the one who commanded to, uh, to genocide and to enslave. You'll find in Numbers 31.18, you'll find in Deuteronomy chapter 21.10, you'll find in uh, uh, first, uh, 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 first Samuel chapter 15, verse 2, and, and this, look, you find here, Whoever strikes, uh, whoever strikes his male or female servant, this is Exodus chapter 21, verse 20. Whoever strikes his male or female servant with a staff, and if they have died by his hands, he shall be guilty of a crime. But if he survives for one day or two, he shall not be subject to punishment because it is his money. You see, if he, if he beats him so badly, beats him so badly that he doesn't survive, that he survives, he doesn't get any crime because it is his money. This is the this is the heart of objectification, of commodification, of all the things that you're accusing Islam of. You have no answer, my friend, to the emancipatory discourse that we find in uh, certain uh, Bella chapter number 90, and the fact that is, uh, freeing slaves was something which is in the zakat obligatory. Also, you'll find in chapter number 24, verse 33 that it's mentioned Mukataba. And Mukataba is the idea of somebody comes who is enslaved and according to one opinion, according to uh, Tafsir al-Qurtubi, that they have to be freed. If they say we don't want to, we want to ransom ourselves, they're enslaved. So in other words, the, the so-called um, time, time. master, you have to be freed. So that's time, 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 time. <laughs> All right, Muhammad is repeating his same erroneous points again. Who is Muhammad Hijab? Let's ask that simple question. His own scholar, Islamic scholar says, Muhammad Hijab is an infidel. Why do I say this? Because his own Islamic scholar, Sheikh Saleh al Fawzan says, slavery is part of Islam. Slavery is part of Islam. Slavery is part of jihad. And jihad will remain as long as there is Islam. So slavery is part of Islam, slavery is part of jihad, and jihad will remain as long as there is Islam. And he goes on to say, he goes on to say, there are ignorant people like Muhammad Hijab here who think slavery, Islamic slavery has been abolished are ignorant. They are not scholars. He said of people who express such opinions. They are merely writers. Whoever says such things is an infidel. Why does Muhammad Hijab say what he says at Hyde Park? Because he knows he can't say what this gentleman said from Saudi Arabia in a nation like ours. He knows it. If he says what he says from Saudi Arabia, he knows Islam would not spread even the tiny little bit it is attempting to do now. And that is why he doesn't do it. And that is why the Saudi Arabian Sheikh calls him an infidel. What do we find? He said Bilal was a black guy and treated with great respect. Bilal said to Abu Bakr, my dear friend Sahih al-Bukhari says, to the time of Abu Bakr, remained a slave. And that is very important for you to know. I don't care what he did. I don't care if he called people to pray. I don't care if he sung a few songs or any of those things. The question is, how did Muhammad treat him? Muhammad treated Bilal as a slave. So continued Abu Bakr. Muhammad was quite happy with this. He was quite happy with slaves continuing as slaves until the end of Islam. 
which is the end of times according to Islam, according to Muhammad, hijab and any other knowledgeable Muslim. So the problem is this. In Islam, blacks, unbelievers, especially women, are treated in a bad way. They are seen as cattle, pigs, all sorts of derogatory terms. This resulted in harsh treatments of sex torture. Female slaves were tortured. Quran Surah 424, Quran Surah 4, verse 3, Surah 4, Surah 4, Ayah 29 and so on. Please answer, Muhammad, if the Quran says that Muslims can take any of the captive women who their right hands possess and have sex with them at any stage um, in the a, a, any stage do you agree with this if you had a wife who is a non-muslim and if muslims were to get hold of her and say she is my captive i can do what i want to do with her will you be happy i'm assuming you won't be and therefore you need to agree islam does terrible things with uh, slaves like I said earlier, Bilal, manumission, a great one of five pillars according to Muhammad. The problem, like I said earlier, Surah Sagi al Bukhari 3765, Sagi al Bukhari 557.99, both of them are against this. Slaves were asked to continue as slaves. Right, let's one more each, yeah? We don't want to spend them like another yeah, two yeah, hours. Yeah. I think it's I think it's settled after okay, all. Really, you, yeah. you, I'm gonna have to say this again. I have one, then you have one, and then I finish because you started, okay? Yes, so yeah. uh, so yours then, yeah. I'm gonna speak, then you, then I conclude, and then that's it, yeah? Okay. Was that two rounds each? No, one more. Right. Yeah, well, he so has two. 424. Where does it say you can have sex with slaves at any time and all the stuff that you're talking about? It doesn't say that at all. All it says is that you're not allowed to marry a woman who's married except what your right hand possesses. What your right hand possesses doesn't mean that you can have sex with them whenever you want. In fact, the idea of raping a woman, whether she is a slave, or whether she's a wife has been spoken about by the Salaf of the Ummah or the predecessors. The Shafi'i mentions it in Kitab al -Um. Even Imam Malik mentions it and the punishment of it is a corporal punishment, something like whipping and so on and so forth. So this is not something that Islam endorses at all. And the evidence of that is the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad where he says, La darar wa la darar. You can't harm or reciprocate harm. How can you rape a woman, whoever she may be, in Islam without causing harm? So this is something that is completely falsehood and it's, it is a, is a projection that he has of his own religion onto mine. Because the truth of the matter is what we've said today is number one, you have the verse in Numbers 31.18. We have Deuteronomy 21.10. We have, we have Exodus that we've spoken about. We have, we, we've, talk, we've spoken about, and there's other verses. There are so many of them that I can't even enumerate them in the short space that I have today. They have been understood by biblical commentators, both Jewish and Christian, of all time, including those writers of the Jerusalem Talmud and others, as meaning captivity and genocide. And that's why the sophisticated theologians of the 21st century and even the 20th century admit this candidly. They admit this candidly, and therefore they make some excuse to disband in the Old Testament and they try and pretend as if it doesn't exist. The truth of the matter is, if you believe Jesus is God, then he is inseparable from the Old Testament authorship, which means he is the one who commanded Moses to do all of those things. If he is the God, he is the one who commanded the people to genocide. He is the one who commanded the people to enslave and so on and so forth. He is the one who said, he is your money when it, when it comes to beating and abusing the slaves and so on and so forth. These verses have had no good response today. Bilal did not remain a slave for all of Islam. This is a falsehood. In fact, that's impossible. He married Hala bin Ta'uf and he gave her a maha and she was a free woman and she, he was a free man. This was absolutely established in the Sunnah and he had children with her. And those children were in fact half white, half black, half Arab. Nobody ostracized him except that they would meet the reprimand of the Prophet Muhammad as in the case of Abu Dhar al-Ghafari in the well-known hadith. 
So therefore, this notion that Islam is a racist religion is something you cannot substantiate. Moreover, moreover, it's something you will not be able to find in the Bible a single verse which has condemnatory tone or an explicit remark relating to racism being a bad thing. So what, do, what have we established today? The number one, the Quran has an emancipatory discourse as mentioned in chapter 90 and as mentioned in the in Surah Tawbah and as mentioned in chapter 24 verse 33. We have mentioned that there are opinions of the Salaf that say that a slave can literally force themselves out of slavery through ransom. It's called Mukataba. Fakatibuhum. Fakatibuhum in Alim Tunfihim Khaira. Give them Mukataba, ransom if they know good, if, if you know good in them. And according to a Qurtubi, that some Salaf said this is by way of wujub, which means it's obligatory, even if the slave master didn't want it. Which is, if this opinion is respected, as good as abolition. This is as good as abolition. If this opinion is not respected, then it's not. He talked about Shah al Fawzan, I'll mention that in the conclusion. Oh, yeah, start. Okay, all Muslims have a very important question to ask today. On the one hand, you have the Bible. A claim is made that Islam and uh, the Bible, the New Testament and the Old Testament are Abrahamic in origin. But what we find are, are clear differences. In the Bible, we don't talk about racism. We don't talk about abolishing of slavery in the way that he wants them to be spoken of. Because the Bible never had slavery like what Islam ever had. What you find in the Bible is the story of God empathizing with slaves, the nation of Israel, redeeming them and leading them on to uh, freedom. This is the story asked. And on the back of that, God of the Bible says, Exodus 22, 21, He says, not to mistreat a stranger or oppress him because you yourselves were strangers in Egypt. So across the Bible, what you find is God of the Bible demanding fair treatment of everyone regardless of race regardless of ethnicity language is spoken and so on and god is seen as god who is impartial in the bible and i asked muhammad multiple times can you show me a place where women were taken as sex captives and he couldn't show that all that he's talking about are a few places where there were there was political war <coughs> and entire people groups were asked to be wiped out by God. Now God, my God, God of the Bible judges. If he has a problem with that, well, I can only say judgment is coming. And a few of these judgments came in the past, Amalekites and so on, judgments came. In contrast, what do you find, what do you find in Islam? In Islam, Islam clearly says that the black people are not worth as much as the Arabs. One black guy, one Arab guy is worth twi two, two black guys. Black people are like raisinets, unbelievers are like cattle and so on. And this resulted in very harsh treatments. Sex torture of female slaves, you find in uh, various portions of the Hadith and Quran 4, 3, 424, um, Surah Al-Kubra 2, 227 and so on. Multiple places you find sex torture of female slaves, Umar torturing female slaves, no rights being given. Quran, Quran Surah 16, Ayah 75 says, Slaves control nothing, no right whatsoever, and that free men cannot be punished for the murder of a slave. Quran Surah 2, Ayah 178, also repeated in Tafsir Jalalin. So the point is torture of sex slaves. No rights. Free men are not equal to the slaves. So clearly no equal treatment. And this therefore resulted in Muhammad not permitting or not allowing manumission to happen. Sahih al-Bukhari 557-99-3765. You find Bilal continuing as a slave. If Bilal says this to Abu Bakr. If you have bought me for yourself, Sahih al-Bukhari 557-99. If you have bought me for yourself, then keep me for yourself. But if you have bought me for Allah's sake, then leave me for Allah's work. He is pleading. This great guy who is the one who calls people to pray for prayer, he is pleading. 
if you have bought me for the sake of Allah, leave me alone. But you are still keeping me as a slave. So Muhammad continuing to keep people as slaves. Sahih al-Bukhari 3, 765, 5, 5, 41 and so on. Slaves working for Muhammad. You know, he said that the Quran says that these believers are like cattle. It doesn't say that. It says, Belhum illa kel an'ami. Belhum adallu sabila. That they are like cattle. No, no, no. They are more astray than the cattle. And as we've seen today. <laughs> worse than cattle. Ah, worse than, worse than, than cattle. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Cattles are better. Okay, be quiet now, please. Don't waste my time. As we've seen today, everybody. We have seen today that that is the case. You're yeah. presented with straight facts and you cannot maneuver away from them. You cannot circumnavigate them. You cannot deal with them. You cannot hermeneutically, acrobatically, gymnastically get away from them. And the reality of the situation is you're dealt with the blunt truth in front of your face as clear as the day and you're just scurrying, scared and absolutely anxious that someone like me, without a paper in my hand, Knowing your scriptures more than you, and knowing my scriptures more than you'll ever know, dealing with you in the way that I've dealt with you. It was, was actually abrogated. Chapter 2, verse 178 was, was abrogated with the ayat in Surah Al Ma'idah, where it was talking which is talking eye for an eye, number one. So that's, uh, and it wasn't what he thought it meant anyway, but it was abrogated in either event. Number one. Point number two, point number two, you keep mentioning Bilal. Bilal was not a slave when he married Hala bin Ta'awf. He was not a slave when he was literally ascending the Kaaba, telling the people, I'm in charge now, re reciting the call to prayer in front of all the Arabs who were literally below him in, 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 in physical stature. How dare you talk about Bilal in that manner when the Prophet said he will be the one, he can hear his footsteps in Jannah. The things that he said about, the things that he said about all the hadiths, about black people being in hell, every single one of them is false. None of those hadiths use the word black, none of them. In fact, like I said, the opposite is true. We have explicit statements from the Prophet saying there's no virtue over a black man over a white man or a white man over a black man, an Arab over a non-Arab. There is no such statement in the Bible. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, we find these genocides of the Amalekites who he admits it to. He says this is them asking for it, basically. We want to be destroyed. No, no one asked for genocide, sorry to say. This is the kind of kalam that we find the Israelis doing with the Palestinians, inspired by that horrible Old Testament narrative. Moreover now, let's be honest. Let's be honest and say that even the New Testament, Jesus calling a non-Jewish person a dog. Yes, at the end of it, he said, okay, I'll give you whatever you want. But he still called her a dog because she was a Gentile. That's racism. Your book is fraught, saturated, filled, contaminated, polluted. It is seeping, brimming with racism, brimming with genocide, brimming with racism. You need us, my friend. You do, we don't need anything from you. You come to us and you ask us, why was everything abrogated in the way it was? Because the Prophet Muhammad eliminated racism, the only person in his time to do so. And it was the only emancipatory discourse of any Abrahamic religion in the world that is Islam. Come to it and stop being arrogant. All right, thank you very much, Muhammad, for that formal debate. Let's let's try and deal with the Quranic content here. Yeah, yeah, yeah please, please come here, please. All the Muslims who would like to challenge that further, please come over here. Please come over here. Please come over here. Sagi Muslims. Muhammad Ijab says, Muhammad Ijab says, Sagi Muslim is abrogated. Muhammad Ijab thinks, Sagi Muslim, chapter 10, 3901. <laughs> <laughs> two black slaves, two black slaves for one Arab slave. Where is the justification for this?
Is there a justification for one Arab being equated to two black slaves? Mohammed Hijab says, Mohammed Hijab says that Mohammed wasn't talking about black people but was talking about dark colored people. Who are the dark colored people? Are these Caucasians? Are these Arabs? Who are the black colored people, sir? Who are the dark colored people, sir? Who are the dark colored people, sir? Who are the dark colored people, sir? According to Quran, who are the dark colored people, sir? According to Quran and Hadith, they it's a Satan. Black, black people are Satan. All right. If you, go, if you call Mohammed a black man, you would be? What's you that? Be? If somebody called Mohammed a black man, that person oh, would yeah, be? Oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get the notes. Call, call rapper. Yeah. All right. So the, so the challenge we have before us is very simple. Muslims have a religion, Islam, with them. And the greatest of examples for mankind in Islam, Muhammad was a trader in black slaves. He had black slaves, he had other slaves, women and so on as slaves. And he advocated others to continue to have them as slaves until the end of his life. Someone as prominent as Bilal himself ended up continuing to be a slave until the end of Muhammad's life. This is what you find in Islam. Okay. Well, it's not a church you should be to act like this shouting and screaming. Okay, okay, let's no, come no, back no, to that. Are you happy? Okay, let's come to that, sir. Let's, like this. let's come to that later, sir. You are a slave for All right. Peace. You are a slave for the church. Well, in terms of no. in terms of how the debate went, I think it's a sort of a 50-50. Unfortunately, again, uh, the problem is the format. It seems like speakers corner preparation isn't great for a formal debate we have here. That's the problem I'm finding time and time again. I think. But here are the points. The points are, when you compare Islam with the Bible, the Quran with the Bible, Islamic sources with the Bible, in regards especially to slavery, what you find is in Islam, you find prejudice against particular people groups, the black people, the non-Muslims, the ones who refuse to become a Muslim and especially those who are war captives and the women among them there is great prejudice against these people in Islam and this prejudice results in deep-rooted unfair treatment when these people come under the control of Muslims the sorts of unfair treatment you find or sex torture of female slaves Slaves having no rights whatsoever, controlling nothing. Slaves not free men, not even being punished for the murder of slaves. Quran Surah 2, Ayah 178. Muhammad continuing to be a slave owner who sold and captured and sex and had sex with his slaves. And arrange for perpetual slavery. I swear he's liar. Few civil. It was nobody easy to read the Quran. How can you read it? <coughs> How can you read it? You, are you, are you, you, you know, you make it laugh at you. It's people laugh at you. Muslims laugh at you. Because when you say, and uh, 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 translating, or is uh, what? Quran. Where's the Quran? That's the miracle of the Quran. You can't understand Do it you? this way. Can I take a screenshot? Yes, yes. Please read this for me, this sir. Is the translation. <coughs> Please read this for me, sir. Surah 4. I can't read English. 
You can't read English. You can speak English but can't read English. No way. You want me to read Quran in English? Of course I can't read English. You mad. Please, please read this for us. You can. What? No way. Ikra. What's the Please matter? read this for us. I can't read it, but I don't understand Ikra. it. You, un you, do you don't understand. Misa. Woman, yeah? You, you will not read the translator. Look, look, when you read Surah Quran, 4, you Ayah 29, please. Look, when you, need, when you read Quran, you don't need a translator. Yeah. You need a scholar. You do, there is a difference between scholar and <coughs> translator. You know, sometimes you find the word like normal we are talking, but it's a, the meaning of it is different. The word of God different. So many things in the Quran. <coughs> Surah 4, Ayah 24, please. يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تأكلوا أموالكم بينكم بالباطل إلا أن تكونوا إلا أن تكون تجارة عن تراضي منكم ولا تقتلوا أنفسكم أنفسكم إن الله كان بكم رحيما. What does it say? That's what I understand. What do you read here? Tell me what did you understand about it. Surah 4, Ayah 24 says this. Oh. And all married women huh? are forbidden to you. All what? And all married women, 24. This is 24. 20, 24, sorry. You go 29, he said. I'm sorry, 24. And all married women are forbidden to you. Is that what it talk about, women? Yeah. Save those 